assess the play of, of your two main tight ends, uh, Burnett and, and Marcus Ball, so far? You know, to, to be honest with you right now, I, we've got to get Nick going a little bit more. You know, he, he's been okay in the past game. And um, run-wise, he's uh, when he's at the point of attack, he's done a nice job. But mentally, he's still not where we want him to be. There's things that he can certainly do better. We're challenging him every day to do that. And you know, he's came in this year with such high expectations. And I think he's pressing, pushing himself and, you know, probably putting some undue pressure on himself to, to perform at a level that we know he can play at. And, you know, and every year's a new year. You know, he, he came in, he was that really good ace reliever a year ago, and now he's that starter, to use a baseball analogy, and now he's got to go do a different gig. And, and so we've got to get him continually to improve his play, and, and he'll do a lot of plays really well. Then he'll have the, one of those, like, oh, why'd you do that kind of play? And so uh, he's getting better. I, and the guy I've been really pleased with, too, is Marcus Ball, um, who's really, uh, you know, played ex very, very well uh, throughout the year. Um, he's continuing to earn more playing time, which I think is kind of cool in his part. And and you you look at uh, you know the Virginia Tech game when we went uh, two tight end personnel grouping, we kind of changed the tempo of that game. And and uh, you know obviously against uh, uh, Hawaii, we did the same thing. We went in with two tight ends in the personnel grouping and and really moved the ball, running the ball with those guys in there. So it, it, they're they're great guys to coach. They're a lot of fun to be around. And uh, you know we're we're continuing to push that envelope, but still. Early in the year, we got a lot of improvement yet. Tim, if, if disaster happened and Nick Van Ed and, and Marcus Ball went down with an injury, who would you put in there at tight end? You know, that would be an interesting question, only because the young guys aren't ready yet, uh, to be as frank and honest with you as they can. I'm sure it would be more of a personnel issue at that point. It would be, you know, are we in different personnel packages? Are we in, you know, two backs and three wide receiver groupings? Are we in, you know, more you know one tight end only and use him in, in four you know four wide receiver groupings and so our main sorry take no tight end out four wide receiver grouping so it, it'd be an interesting thing to, to to go through i hope we don't have to knock on wood uh and, and it, we're not where we want to be with the young guys yet and uh obviously you know the the one thing about ohio state it has an expectation level every time you go out and play a game and uh, if you're not there, you're certainly not going to get, just because you're the next guy in, a chance to play. you got to be ready to go do your job extremely well. And so we're not there yet, and we're working every day to get there. So AJ Alexander and Rashad Berry probably will redshirt. Does that You know, I, we real? really don't talk about that yeah. part, and be very honest with you. Uh, the, the fact is, you know, they're, they go out and they, you know, run a lot of scout team reps right now because that's their role. Um, and, and I don't foresee them playing this year, but I, we never really, we don't talk about that. We really never sit in a room and talk about that part of the game. Question is, if you, we need you to win, we're going to play you. <laughs> Coach, um, before you got to Columbus, you did a lot of work with the running backs, and yes. it's well documented that they had very little fumbling problems. This year, Zeke and Samuel kind of put, put the ball on the ground a couple of times. Did you come in and, and work with them on ball security at all? Well, the one thing, we, we it's an interesting thing. We have put the ball on the ground. We've had too many turnovers. And, and really, you look at the last five or six ball games, and it's been addressed uh, a, a lot. Um, we certainly all have expectations about how to go about that. And we did have a group discussion about maybe some things to, to drill-wise to complement that. Uh, it, it's an interesting thing, you know, and you look at ball security. Uh, when you see a player, you know, most fumbles happen when you see a player start to bend down to take on a tackle. And what happens is, is you have to have the ability to re-lift your wrist above your elbow and lock that elbow tight. And what a lot of people do when they start to bend, they drop their wrist. And it's, a, it's, a, it, it's something that people do. It's something that's addressed when you look at a lot of the fumbles. You look at, you know, Corey Smith's in the national championship game a year ago is kind of how that one happened. You look at Curtis early in the year, same kind of thing happened when you bend down. The arm was kind of parallel instead of wrist up, and, and those fumbles happen. So, yeah, there's things that we do and address, and, and uh, I know Coach Myers wants us emphatically to make sure we get that change because you – Eventually, it'll come back and haunt you. You just can't put the ball on the ground. You can't have turnovers. And we, we were certainly addressing that very hard. Tim, um, I think we all knew that Jeff Hireman was a good player. But Coach Myers said some things last couple of weeks. And Ed Warner, you said it just like about how important he was to this offense last year. <coughs> just what, what was it exactly? I know that. Well, you know, the one thing about it is the game 
this game, and God bless this game, because it's a game of the who the toughest guys are normally some of your better players. Sometimes they, you know, whatever they do, and Jeff certainly had a lot of athletic ability, but you know, he was a mentally and physically tough kid. I mean, he, he really brought something to the game uh, that way, and, and sometimes he would just out physical you. And you know, you always talk about with a group, you want to kind of always break the will of the opponent with your toughness and have the ability to assert yourself and those sort of things. And he was a guy that could do that. And when you talk about where Nick is today, that's the one thing we're trying to really, really do a great job of, of, of bringing him to that physical level. He possesses all those talents. Um, you know, he, he's a little different deal. You know, Jeff came in as a tight end, Nick came in as a wide receiver. You know, I mean, he was going to recruit it as a tight end, but played all wide receiver in high school. And, and, and sometimes it, it just is that mentality there of how to play. and. You know, we spend an awful lot of time, I know Coach Meyer talks about it, on hand control and power. And you know the guys that have really strong, powerful hands are really good blockers. And those who don't really play with physical hands and really dominant hands are normally pretty average blockers. And um, that's the one thing that we're really emphasizing right now. And Jeff had just, when, when Jeff really got his hands in good football position on you, he controlled the block really well. And that's, and Nick's, we're getting better at it. We really are. We're, it's a great thing about every year you get a chance to grow with the players. And with, with any offense, with how you guys were playing at the end of last year, what, what is the normal expectation of what, how much carryover there would be to the next year? How much you just pick up and say, we got a lot of important guys back, we have the same scheme, here we go? Or how much really is it every year is completely different and kind of start over? You know, it's interesting, and I'd love to have sit down and have this conversation with I see Coach Coop in the back with Coach Coop. But, but you know, it's really interesting. The one thing I don't think people really understand, that every team is a new team. And, and, and you look back, and I used this analogy the other day, you look back at NBA basketball, so, you know, like would, would the Lakers really won with Kirk, without Kirk Rambis, Kirk Rambis, whatever, right? Would he really have won without him? Because... All of a sudden, what happens happen, and what has to happen on every play on every team is you got to develop who are your role players, who are you guys be your playmakers, who are you, well, how does this guy execute on this play, this play, and there's only one way to find out, and that's game reps. Evan Spencer last year, coach says all the time was the most viable player. How many catches did he have? How many touchdowns did he have? But he had a role that made Ohio State really, really good, and that's one of the things. When you go out and you start that new team this year. And that new offensive team is you're always trying to put those pieces together. How do we put people in the roles that make us really, really successful? How do people develop into those roles of being really, really successful? So I think that's the one part that's kind of left out. You can bring all that talent back, I and mean, there's certainly a lot of talent on this football team. The question is, is putting in all those pieces and getting it going the right way. Because it's a new team. Regardless of who comes back, it's a new year, a new team, and a new group of guys. New leadership's got to form. New role players got to form. New stars, you know, or the old stars got to reemerge. It all starts over, and it's all really important stuff in my eyes, and it's kind of the way we look at it. You know, they, it, everybody has a role. And you look, and I keep using Evan Spencer because think about how much Coach emphasized what he did for this team last year. But he didn't have 40 catches. Right? But he had a significant role on this team, but he developed his role. And that's what you're always trying to find out, what's your role in, this, in, our, in our 2015 team? Who are those guys? What do they do? Coach, uh, what does it mean to you to have a large part of your extended family coaching football in Ohio? Uh, how have you helped them out? You think there's a lot of them? <laughs> well, I tell you what's really cool for me is that, you know, like when I, just on a personal note, when you go on a team walk, you know, the coaches all the walk with me all are laughing. I said, you know everyone here. You know what I mean? Because there's people from all the places that I've obviously lived and people that know my family and those sort of things. That's been really cool. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I, I got to say, I've lived a dream. And I, and I really have said it many, many times. Who comes home to do what I get to do for a living? Really. I mean, very few guys in this profession ever get to come home. I mean, literally home. Because, I mean, 30 miles south of here is where I grew up. Families had season tickets here since 1950. You, listen, I came home, and, and I so I, I every day like kind of pinch myself, even though it was maybe some saggy, droopy eyes of being tired. That uh, bottom line is this is it's an unbelievable experience, and then to be able to share it with so many. You listen, I, the hardest thing I have during the week is trying to figure out how to get enough tickets for everyone to show up. <laughs> the heck with the opponent. That's the hardest thing I do. 
I hate to come down from that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I did want to ask, though, about Nick. I mean, is, do you think he's going through a little transition of, like, wanting to be Jeff as opposed to, like, doing what, what, what Nick can do? I mean, is – and there's a little bit of pressure on him to sort of be. There's a, there's a lot. There's yeah, a lot. there's a lot of pressure on me. You know, and again, it, it's an interesting thing when you go through the life with these kids throughout, you know, the summers and all that. Because you, you know, no, no offense. I mean, you can say all you want, but our our kids know what the projection of them for the next level may be. They know what the, you know, they go on these watch lists, and there's all the, and and they. They obviously we, we try to keep them very grounded and don't follow it, don't worry about it, you know, just keep doing what you do. And then guys really set expectation levels for themselves. I mean, he has really high expectation levels for himself. And, and it, it's he's had some spectacular plays, uh, you know, where he's done very, very well. The consistency's not been where I want. And I'm not trying to call Nick out. And, you know, we talk, I wouldn't say it publicly, but we don't have these honest conversations all the time. Our biggest thing is, is getting him to play it, it, all the time as consistent as he can. And, and, and he's very capable, and I, it, we're going to see that. Uh, you know, he, again, I, I say it all the time, you know, that relief pitcher part. But, you know, very first play a year ago in the Alabama game, Jeff Ironman goes down to first play, plays like eight plays the entire Alabama game. You know, Nick Vanette came in and played 70 of them. Well, and then obviously there were some good results. So, you know, he, he, he just, you know, like I said, at New Year, we talked about earlier that New Year, it's a new year for him. And it's a different role, and he's got to go match that role. Another quickie, uh, Marcus Ball, where have you seen the last couple of weeks, what tells y'all he's making strides? I mean, what, what just jumps out at you? Well, you, you know, the thing is, is, is practice habits more than anything. Is he's doing what we're seeing on ga in game day in a practice. Where early, you know, some guys develop at different rates. He really didn't practice like that on a continuous basis. And and uh, he's been doing that really consistently. He goes out every day. He's doing a good job of finishing blocks. He's putting a hat on the right guy. He's running the right route. And that all sounds simple. But, you know, if you're not executing mentally correctly either, you're not going to get on the field here. So uh, he's been doing all that. And, and the beautiful thing is now he, he's uh, – what you see in practice is what you see in games. And some kids aren't always like that. But what I've been seeing in practice, what Coach Myers has been seeing in practice, is what we've been getting in games. And that's uh, been ver really exciting to watch. And you always just, it's like to see a young guy continue to develop and get better. You really do. And that's what I see right now.